Hey, Tim here. Welcome to Budget Bronco. Uh, big news this week from Ford. They have now officially released uh, the long-anticipated, speculated Heritage Edition. And if you've uh, already been watching my channel, you've seen that, well, you don't have to spend uh, $45,000 on a Heritage Edition model if you really like the retro Bronco look. Um, so I thought uh, with the news this week, it'd be good uh, maybe for some new viewers to kind of go over all the mods that you can make. Uh, give yourself that same heritage look uh, for at least $10,000 less than uh, Ford will be selling uh, the uh, heritage edition. Now, today I don't think we're going to talk about the limited uh, heritage. That is a whole nother level. That probably does have some value to it with respect to the small numbers of them that will be made. But if you just like the heritage look... Um, you can do a lot of those same mods yourself, save a lot of money in the process. So I'm going to show you some of the modifications I've made uh, to get a lot of those same heritage kind of features. Uh, I'll show them one by one. And then at the end, I'm going to show uh, those who are new at the channel uh, a total 360 view of uh, my Bronco. Also, please, if you want to stay till the end, I'm going to give you a sneak peek on uh, the latest mod I'm working on. Uh, it's actually a really difficult one, one I'm really excited about, one I think is going to be really cool. I'll give you a sneak peek. Stay till the end. Let's go. Throughout this video, my Bronco is on the left, and the new Ford Heritage Edition is on the right. And right off the bat, you can see uh, the striking similarities, especially in the grill and the wheels and the top and the script. Uh, but one thing that you cannot easily do yourself that I do, in fact, really like on the new Heritage Edition are those squared-off fenders uh, that you see there on the right. Uh, the only way to get those is on the Everglades Edition, and if you're doing that, you're already going to spend a whole lot lot of money for that trim uh, so if you really 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 like the and want the squared fenders you're going to have to go with the heritage edition if you can live with the more rounded look on uh, all other broncos uh, then you can easily replicate the other things so i'm going to show you one by one all of the different aspects of the heritage look that i have accomplished on my bronco which uh, by the way i was delivered uh, one year ago and have uh, worked on the mod since so i already have all of these things in place and i'll show you now one by one Let's talk about the grill. The obvious difference that jumps out is that the Heritage Edition says Ford, just like the Gen 1 Broncos have, uh, whereas mine says Bronco. I actually intended, when I built my grill oh, a year ago, to, ha to change the letters to say Ford, but I couldn't figure out a way to do it without really mangling the grill, uh, so ultimately I stuck with the Bronco letters. Another thing that bugged me back at the time when I was trying to plan it out is I couldn't get over the fact that the O and the D in this new Bronco script that they're using look almost exactly the same. And the grill looks like Foro. You know it says Ford, but the O and the D are so similar, it just seemed goofy to me. Um, and sure enough, you can see there, uh, if you were just reading that for the first time and you didn't know what it said, it looks like Foro. Um, so I went with Bronco. Um, they're both nice. Uh, another thing that you might notice if you look really closely is the Heritage Edition grill has six columns of slots, whereas the base grill that I uh, use and based mine on has seven columns of slots. The original Gen 1 Broncos had six, so that is more period correct. But the base grill looks very similar. Very few people are ever going to notice that. Uh, and really, I'm happy with how this turned out. You can see the process I used up in the top there, looping. Uh, every single one of these modifications, if you go to my YouTube channel, there's a full video showing the process. When it comes to the top, you basically have two options to get white. You can wrap it, which is what I did. I used 3M2080 film, uh, did it myself, and spent about $200 in materials to get a nice wrap on there. Uh, or you can get it painted. I have now heard some people taking it to high-quality paint shops. That's going to cost 1000 maybe even more than $1,000, but should last longer. My wrap, a year after having installed it, is starting to peel in a couple places, starting to bubble in a couple places, mostly because I don't know how to wrap professionally. Uh, it was my first time ever doing it. I think a, a professional wrap installer could also do a better job. But it's going to be a lot cheaper for sure. Won't last as long. You can see I also wrapped the hinge covers at the top of the window in the rear. 
the Heritage model are black, and on mine you can see that they're white. Another thing I'll note here is that the official color for the Heritage white is Oxford white. My white is a medium white. I think it might be a little bit brighter than the Oxford white. You can't really tell in these photos just based on the lighting conditions, uh, but they actually are probably pretty close to each other. That's the white top. For the wheels and tires, I actually really do like the style of wheel that the Heritage Edition is using. But I also love the steelies that come on the base Bronco. And uh, it's also a relatively easy and very inexpensive project to paint them. I painted my steel wheels white for 72 bucks. Um, one of the biggest expenses of my build, though, is the tires themselves. These General Grabbers, a set of five, cost $1,100 installed, uh, which is still not too bad. I think the price of those tires has gone up a bit over the last year, uh, but this is a pretty easy mod to make. Now, these steel wheels are 16-inch wheels, and the wheels that come on the Heritage Edition are 17-inch wheels. They're mated to a 35-inch tire. My General Grabbers are 33-inch tires. So, pretty comparable, very similar look. Um, I like the Steelies. Some people don't. If you want something more comparable to the look of the Heritage Edition, take a look at the 15 1952 analog HD wheels. Uh, Google that. They are uh, fairly expensive. It's $1,600 for a set of five. For the badge, of course, Ford is using the old Bronco script on these Heritage Editions, as they should. I was lucky a year ago when the Broncos first came out, I was able to purchase one of these from a company that is no longer selling them. And unfortunately, there's been a few companies that sold them uh, that have stopped selling them. I think the speculation is that Ford is not allowing unlicensed use of this uh, logo. And to their uh, right, they can do that. Um, you can find out there on the internet licensed versions of these Bronco badges. They are intended and designed for the Gen 1 Bronco. So you can purchase them. They're made out of metal and they have a pin in the back that actually goes through a hole in the fender. So you'll have to modify them if you want to use them on these Broncos. Uh, a lot of people are just shaving off that pin and using 3M tape or something similar to stick them on. Uh, so that's the next best option if you want to replicate that heritage look. Lastly, let's talk about the interior. I'm just going to come right out and say it. I hate the plaid on the Heritage Edition. It's not as bad on the Limited, but on this blue uh, version, I think it looks horrible. And I guess I give board props for trying uh, something that is a little retro, but it just comes off bad in my opinion. I'd love to know what you all think in the comments. Maybe it's just me, uh, but I definitely do not like that. Uh, I think the base, uh, my Bronco, has one of the best interiors of all the different trims. It's just simple and nice. The cloth is uh, really nice as well and uh, works together with the Bronco. So I've been super happy with my interior. The other thing you notice on the Heritage is that white dashboard on the right there. You could do that as well with wrap. It wouldn't be easy. Uh, you know, again, I can kind of take it or leave it, but if you really want to have that effect, I think you could do it with either wrap or maybe paint. Um, I think it could go either way on that. But the plaid, definitely not. Which, again, is one of the great benefits of doing a build like this yourself. You get to make it exactly the way you want it and you don't get stuck with stuff that you don't want. I'll finish my video by doing a full walk around of my Bronco and at the same time explain you pricing. You can get a 2022 two-door base with destination charges for $32,895. Uh, all of the modifications that I showed you here are a sum total of $1,522, takes you to a total of $34,417. Now the new Ford Heritage Edition entry point is $44,305, so you can save right about $10,000 by starting with the base and doing your own modifications to give yourself that retro look. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you found that uh, informative and useful. Before I sign off, let me give you that sneak peek I promised. Uh, project I'm working on on the inside of the Bronco. If you take a look right there, you'll notice what happened to the shift boot. The shift boot is gone. I am working on building my own custom 
leather shift boot, uh, which is really interesting and not that easy, but uh, excited to finish up the project and show you the finished results soon. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate all the viewers and we'll see you next time.